So, welcome to the J. Hu Garcia podcast. As I see here, you're um, you're from Advanced Power Vehicles in Mexico, right? Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do there? Yes. Hi. Thank you for inviting me to the show. All right. Nice, Thank you for coming. Nice to be here. Yeah. Well, um, the idea of this project company, uh, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> is to accelerate the transition into electric vehicles here in Mexico. Yeah. And um, obviously, the, 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 the technology is, is expensive, uh, especially since it's always been expensive and it still is expensive. So I just thought, okay, maybe a way to accelerate this is with uh, the conversions. You know, you're very familiar with that. Yeah. Uh, and that's how the, the idea started of, of, of the project. Okay. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's expensive no matter where you are. Uh, here in the States, it's quite a bit of expensive, right? The battery technology is really, really expensive. And so for other c countries, it's probably even more expensive, I want to say, right? Because uh, at least here, we have a lot of access to secondhand batteries, right? And that's what we've been using. I don't know. What what are you using over there? And, and which part of Mexico are you established? Yeah, okay. I'm in Guadalajara. Guadalajara. Guadalajara, Jalisco, which is close to the to the Pacific, is the second largest or more important city in, in, in the country. Um, and uh, well, the thing here, I mean, in Mexico, even though we are next to the states, uh, we're we're always like ten years behind in technology. Uh, yeah. Like Tesla, it came ten years after it was uh, uh, founded. Tesla opened in Mexico in 2017, officially, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. There were people that imported ca their cars, but there was no, no, no officially Tesla here. So, so we're always 10 years behind. I thought, okay, that's going to be the same with, with, with uh, electric vehicles. Uh, I, actually, I tried to, to bring Tesla. Uh, when they were just starting, I contacted them like in 2007. When I heard about it, I was like, oh, my God, this is so great. I, I want to uh, have a dealership <laughs> for, for, of Teslas. But then I, I, I learned that that was not the, not the way they were doing business. So I couldn't bring it to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're kind of anti-dealerships. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, they were starting, right? It, was, it, uh, it took a little while for them to get – in 2007, I mean, that's uh, – they, was that the Roadster area? That was pre-Roadster yeah. area. Yeah. So That's exactly with the Roadster. Yeah, yeah, and that was that was played with like a lot of delays, and yeah, it would have been. It, maybe it was a good thing that you didn't get <laughs> involved with that. <laughs> <laughs> I almost. Yeah, maybe. they almost didn't make it because of that thing. So you might have uh, <laughs> suffered the same <laughs> or that faith out there, right? Well, the yeah. Thing is, I Story, but I was already into into the idea of electric vehicles back then. Um, when I was a kid, I had uh, these uh, professional radio control cars, RC so I cars? was already uh, familiar with electric vehicles. Obviously, not in, the, in that size; that's just a toy. But I was like, like, uh, like used to that. And then, when I was in college, in the last uh, year, I worked on a project. Uh, the university, which I studied, is, which is uh, Tecnológico de Monterrey, um, they brought this uh, project to work with uh, from an engineer. Actually, he, he was from, from, from LA, from, from, from Burbank. And he had developed these uh, flywheels to store energy. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of the flywheels. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they developed that for, for a car, actually. In the really? 1992, yeah. In 1992, Kevin Cosner was the, the founder of that company. One, one, one of the founders, investors wow. of that company, of that project. But they couldn't, they couldn't sell it to the big three back then. Yeah. And actually, that system ended up in satellites for, for NASA. Yeah, that makes sense in satellites because uh, a, a spinning disk or spinning mask so there's a, a, a gyroscope, right, which is good for a satellite. 
Not maybe not for a car, because <laughs> if you want to <laughs> turn, then the car's not gonna want to turn. You know, it's gonna do some weird things with the. But I I see that you can save energy by spinning a mass really fast, and then it conserves the energy there for quite a bit. There's large uh, grid scale yeah. spinning disks, right? And they that's how they save energy to to handle uh, inrush or you know uh, peaks or whatever. You know, they buff they're exactly. like buffers. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the thing is, if you compare a flywheel, even in, in the 90s, with lead-acid battery, the flywheel was way superior. I mean, really? Uh, wow. Yeah, okay, guys, so, so the energy density was higher. <laughs> yeah, the energy density, they could have like 20,000 cycles. <laughs> wow. Um, lighter, uh, smaller, I mean, without the chemical. The, the chemical yeah. Yeah. So, it was a very good idea, and, and they wanted to put this in cars, like obviously in pairs, rotating contrary, so you can cancel the, the forces. Oh, so you can cancel the forces, yeah, okay. So the thing is, they couldn't do it. The, the, the company came down, they couldn't sell it. They, they ended up selling to, to satellites, but it was not the big project they, they, they thought. So I met them in 2004. And I kept thinking of this, like, oh, my God, this, this is a good idea. We, we could do this. And I thought, like, maybe we could do this in Mexico because regulations is different, not to say a little bit less. <laughs> so I was yeah. trying to find investors for, for this for, for some time. Uh, but then I contact these guys, which is, uh, well, the engineer was Jack, uh, Jack Vitri and, and his son. Um, but they didn't want to work, to work on this anymore. They had other projects. But then uh, Formula One came uh, hybrid, like in 2009, and one of the teams incorporated the, the flywheel, which was, was built by a British company. And then the team, which is Williams, Williams Racing, uh, they, they brought the idea in-house and started developing uh, to, to commercialize the, the flywheels for, for vehicles. So when I heard of this, I contacted them, uh, like in 2012, with the idea of bringing this technology to Mexico as, as a distribution. And I told them about the potential of customers. Uh, I had already contacted some possible customers. There are companies here that have fleets of 30,000, 40,000 vehicles. Yeah. Uh, and one of those companies was already converting uh, small, small delivery trucks. Uh, so they were like, yeah, yeah, that's a pretty, pretty good idea. So let's let's do it. But we're we're uh, we're developing here in, in, in England, so there's no way, no no case of developing in two sides, in two parts of the world. So so we'll finish here, and once it's a product, we'll talk about it. So after two years, they finally uh, told me like, okay, it's a product. But then they sold all the technology and the project to another big company, oh, and I yeah. lost track. And I was kind of frustrated, like, oh, my God, I was waiting for some years. I contact this, uh, this new uh, company that, that got the technology. And they, they said, uh, so they actually gave me numbers. And uh, I always, always had in mind that the best way to start electric vehicles was with the heavy ones. Oh, Because okay. the return of investment would be better because you burn more fuel with heavy vehicles. So yeah. that's more cash, right? So the more cash you save, uh, the faster you can pay for, for the technology. So I was not afraid of, of making big electric vehicles. On, uh, on the contrary of the market that was kind of doing only a small light vehicles, right? Yeah. And this, this company actually developed the, the, the flywheel system, which was some kind of like, like a hybrid. Like uh, uh, when, with the braking, uh, getting all the energy, from the braking, and then uh, using it for, for the acceleration after but the bus stopped, and it will help. And uh, actually, I think the savings was like, somewhere around 30 to 5 percent. Oh, okay. So you still have an engine, a combustion engine on board, and then you're using some of that energy, recapturing and putting it on the spinning wheel. Yeah. The thing is, that's when okay. batteries were like 2,000, 5,000 per kilowatt hour, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you wanted to avoid bad batteries. And back then, I was also enemy of batteries because I just thought this flywheel was the, the, 
the thing. Great wonder of the world. So what kind of like, just to put it in perspective, what kind of energy density we're, we're talking about here? Like, and for how long, like how much, yeah, how much can you store in one of these spinning discs? Because they got to be like not huge, right? I, mean, I guess for a bus, yeah. it could be kind of big. What's the size or roughly the so size actually, of each energy? They're kind of small. Um, I, I don't know how to relate it to something physical, but um, I don't know. Maybe this this wide. Uh, so oh, really? Like uh, maybe less than a foot or less than. Yeah, like a foot meter. tall, maybe a little bit more. Wow. Um, okay. I, I mean, you can vary. You, you can vary the design with the size. You know. Uh huh. Um, and what's the I, yield? Like, can you store a kilowatt hour worth of energy in there? And for how long? Because it's got to spin and then it starts diminishing, right? But it's a way to store energy for a time, a period of time. I just don't know how much that time well, is. The, the cool thing about this technology is that um, first, yeah, 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 you can store energy, but you can get it, you can put it in and get it back out really fast. Yeah. Like you can have C rates of 50, 20, 50, I mean, because um, there's, um, as uh, it depends on how fast you can slow the disc, you know. Yeah. With, with with the motor that is also a generator, so yeah. So you can have very good series, um, which back then with lithium-ion batteries you couldn't, right? Mm -hmm. So you can put these uh, flywheels with these uh, cylinders in series in parallel. And get all the power you wanted. It would depend on, on the project and how much power you, you wanted to have. These guys, the, the, the flywheels they were uh, man, producing, I think they were somewhere around like kilo, a kilowatt hour okay. per flywheel. So you would have maybe like three or four for, for a bus just to have enough energy like for, for, for regen and when braking and, and, and acceleration. And they but, would get up to uh, speed by a small motor, you know, that was generating yeah. electricity, a small onboard generator, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. You, you use a small engine with a small generator that gets the things up spinning. So that means you can just hop in this vehicle and then take off. You have to power the, the, the spinning discs, right? Uh, until they were up to speed and they had the energy stored in there and then you probably would take off and... And, and there was probably a lot of ma energy management as you were driving around that the system would have to do to keep those charged. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, and it, it worked pretty good in Formula One cars. Pretty really? Good. That's so crazy. Yes. I, I never knew that they were already in racing cars. Yeah, I mean, racing cars, you'd have to, it's high performance. It's not just the works. It has to work really well, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. And it has to be safe. Wow, that's crazy. Okay. Yeah. So, so we, we, I tried to bring this technology to here. Uh, and I already had contact with a, a BRT company that has the public transport service here in Mexico, which they have 18-meter uh, buses, 30 ton. Uh, I think that's like 60,000 pounds. 60,000 pounds, yeah. Yeah, somewhere around there, uh, which is... The, uh, it was very similar to the project they had in the state in, in England, which was like for the double decker buses, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I contact the the uh, public transport company. We analyzed the numbers, and they were like, "Yeah, it sounds good, but the return of investment is not right there." The thing is, back then, that was 2012, no, uh, 14. Uh, diesel prices in Mexico were kind of cheap, yeah. So the payback was not that good. So they, I couldn't get them to to be interested in, in in the project. So I got frustrated and I was like, "Oh my god, I, I've been waiting for this like two years at least, or maybe even more." And the technology doesn't fit to the problems we have here in Mexico. So I just thought, I'm gonna make my own technology or my own solution, right? Mm -hmm. So I look for, for funding. I got a, a, a funding from the National Science. Um, uh, I don't know how to translate the name. <laughs> it's the the, the, the the Council for National Science, something like that. 
uh, I got the uh, first round of funding, so I started to, to work on a conversion project for buses. For buses, okay. With yeah, with batteries. Buses. Yeah, when I started, I, I wanted to, to determine which was going to be the better way of doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So I started uh, working on the numbers, and then I realized, like, okay, this flywheel solution works great, but it, it's a hybrid, right? It's a hybrid. It's a hybrid. Uh, I want it to be 100% electric. But then uh, you would need a lot of flywheels. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then I started, uh, back then I hated batteries. They were heavy, yeah. bulky, expensive, um, not that powerful, right? Yeah. Uh, especially real expensive. So I was trying to build batteries, but then uh, I did some research and I found some batteries that were kind of there with the power, you know? So I, I said, okay, and, and I saw all these projects in, in not, 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 not in the States, but like in, in China and everything, of these buses like the Proterra bus, yeah. huge buses with huge batteries uh, that can last all day long, but they cost like a million dollars. Like that. Mm. That would be impossible to pay uh, here. So I, so I said, okay, that's not a way to go. You don't, you don't really need a vehicle that has all day long range if you are going in a loop 10 times per day, you're going around there 10 times per day. So you can do some fast charging uh, in some of, of those uh, turns. Uh, so I was looking, okay, let's have a small battery with, that can be powerful enough to provide the, the, the acceleration for, for the heavy bus. And then we'll do some, some fast charging. Maybe if it's, it has to be every, every lap, I don't know. So that, that was the, the, the main concept of the, of the project. And, uh, and yeah, we built the, the bus. Um, the first stage of the bus, we were able to convert it in six months after we like, got the bus and started to work. And from there, we started testing, uh, developing. Uh, obviously, the, the technology was too early for, for here from Mexico. And then another project came to the door, which is the electric carriage. <laughs> electric carriage. <laughs> and we got a little distracted with that, uh, but that's a really good story. Wow. Yeah. So the car there's the horse-drawn carriage, right? Like, uh, like we see in New York City and the uh, Central Park, for example. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the thing is, we were developing uh, the, the electric bus. And we were doing demonstrations to, to customers. We took it to Mexico City, did a lot of demonstrations there. Uh, but obviously, even though it was like half the price of what a new bus would cost, um, it was still expensive, right? And, and people didn't trust the, the electric technology yet. And then the, the, the elections year was very, very close. So every politician starts thinking about that and stop thinking about projects, you know? Mm. So I was like, oh my God, this is, this is gonna, this project is gonna lose uh, momentum because we're some months into, into election year. Oh, uh, what are we gonna do? And then I heard on the, on the news, uh, because here in Guadalajara, we have the horse on carriages since 100 years ago, as a tourist attraction, I mean, uh, and I heard on the news that they wanted to put a motor, motor into them <laughs> okay. because uh, using courses was not civilized in the 21st century and blah, 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 all, all those things, uh, which I'm sure. Actually, that happened the same way in, in New York and some other places. So when yeah. I heard of this, I was like, you, what, what are they going to do? They're going to put a two, uh, <laughs> uh, two strokes... <laughs> engine yes. motorcycle engine to these oh, things and no. yes it's gonna sound terrible the vibration the smell uh, they're yes. gonna ruin the experience mm -hmm. uh so i i uh, reached the city uh, and i said you know i can do this electric and it's gonna look better it's gonna uh, keep the, the the feel of of a nice soft ride that the horse provides 
but without the horse. So they loved the idea. Obviously, it did help that I had an electric bus. So then you, okay, you did that. You can, <laughs> you yeah. can do this obviously. And uh, so we started working on, on this project. Uh, and but they only gave us four months to have it ready. Oh wow! Mm. And in the beginning, the first idea was okay. Let's convert it, the, the old ones. So I went downtown to see the old ones. I was like, oh my god, no, you cannot convert it. <laughs> Okay. All of them were different, um, different sizes, different shapes. Well, obviously, all, all of them with uh, made out of wood. The, the old way of of a, of a horse and carriage. Yeah. So I thought, okay, no, we're gonna have to make a new one. Uh, and then I started analyzing. I'm an industrial designer, so so I know how to go from idea to <laughs> to a to a product. Um, so I thought, okay. Cars are the the grandsons of carriages. Yeah. The first car was a horse-drawn carriage with an internal combustion engine, and uh, yeah. and even there's there's proof that electric cars were are almost uh, as old as any, any any internal combustion engine. Like, aren't they? I think they're older. I think the first cars well, there were some that were earlier. Well, I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, but I think yeah. It, yeah. At the, I think at the same time they were starting, right? At the, the, before the turn of the century, yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. In the late eighteen uh, nineties, yeah, somewhere, somewhere there. So I started analyzing like all the history, and uh, some years before this, like in two thousand fifteen, I, I went to Detroit, and I had the opportunity to go into for, into the Ford Museum, which is really cool. And obviously, there you can see all the evolution of cars. Yeah. And and I start thinking about that, like, okay, so I have to make this electric electric carriage as a as a today car, you know. So I'm not gonna use wood anymore. It's gonna be all steel. Uh, and and more like like a tourist product because they used to do the carriages. Like they were doing them 150 years ago, with the same tradition, same techniques. And I was like, yeah. "Yeah, that's good, like for restoration." But not, that's not a a, uh, a tourist product, you know. Mm -hmm. Like like the footsteps were really small, and it had only one, so you had to jump like two feet to reach the step, and another two feet to reach the the inside of the carriage, and that was dangerous, difficult. So. Uh, we we design uh, everything, uh, and we build the, the carriage in, in in four months. We we went from project to prototype, and it was presented to to the city, and it was a huge thing. I mean, I just couldn't believe the, the boom it was in 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 media, and not even in Mexico. Even uh, the, there were many uh, news from other countries that replied it because there are a lot of, of horse drawn carriages in many cities around the world. Yeah. You can have them in, in, in Melbourne, in Australia, in, in Canada, everywhere. Yeah. And in each city, they have these uh, advocate groups that uh, yes. defend horses. Well, I think, so yeah, they reply it, the news. things are, ch are changing, right? Cities are becoming more congested. They're becoming more dangerous. Yeah, a horse <laughs> doesn't fit in the middle of a city. It's a... Uh, I guess it could be kind of cruel to have this horse working all day in the middle of all that stuff, right? Uh, breathing all the fumes. You know, it's like, it's dangerous for us, and it's also for the horse. So, yeah, they're they're facing a lot of uh, a lot of concerns and a lot of people that don't want to see those horses out uh, working all yes. day, right? Yeah, so they're facing the same challenges all around the world. Yeah. Yes, actually, these things, the, the same thing happened in New York. Uh, like in 2012, and actually somebody built a a, uh, a big electric uh, vehicle that looked like, like more like a Model T. Oh yeah. Uh, and they had this, this uh, like public voting, and people voted to keep the horses. But the thing in New York is different because you have the huge Central Park. Yeah, Central so, Park is, a, is like a little island exactly. where you you're shielded from just the chaos that's happening in the rest of the city. Uh, so I guess maybe yeah. it's like a different thing, yeah. 
Yeah, it's, in some of the other cities, they, they, they go through the, through the, in the streets next to the buses and to the trucks and to the cars. And so, yeah, it's, it's complicated. So we thought, okay, yeah, this is the best solution you can have, an electric horseless carriage. Yeah. <laughs> the future is coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> it's more like going back to the future, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So that had good results. Did they uh, did, did it get past uh, past the point of the one the one uh, one that you built that it was like a prototype? Yes, yes, there are uh, already sixteen. Oh uh, wow! Okay. On the streets, uh, going every day. No way! Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's been it's been a great project. Um, these all the owners are really happy. Just imagine, some of the of the owners, well. Um, there are 50, 54 carriages here, here in the city. Okay. Uh, I think there were like 36 owners and 100 drivers, some of them being owners, but some of them being more like employees. Uh, but some of the, of the drivers of the horseless, of the horse-drawn carriages, they didn't even know how to drive. <laughs> okay. Because see, the, the, the horse does all the job. It's like a, an autonomous vehicle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it has a brain and it makes decisions. Yeah. Yeah. They, they learn to see when the car in front stops and they stop. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they, some of them can even see like 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 the stoplight and they will stop. <laughs> they're, they're, they are smart. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, so 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 the, the the driver, he's more like uh, looking backwards, talking to the to the people. And telling them the story of, of the city, like, oh, this is the old building from the uh, 18th century and, and all that. Yeah. So there were a lot of things to change. Some of them needed to learn how to drive. <laughs> Obviously, okay. no, none of them knew anything about electric vehicles. So yeah. we have to teach them, like, at least the basics. And, uh, but, yeah, it's, it's been a very successful, uh, successful project. And we're looking forward to replicate this in some other places. Yeah, man, I'm gonna have to go check it out. Yeah, uh, well, I just had Guadalajara. my brother was just in Guadalajara um, not too long ago. He went with friends to visit there, and had I known, I would have sent them out there to be my reporter. Um, <laughs> can we talk a little bit about the 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 technology? What you end up using on those? Like, so they have lithium batteries, obviously, probably. Well, hopefully not. I mean. Hopefully they had lithium batteries. Now, the, the problem was the, the budget. Ah, okay. Yeah, they gave us a, a budget for, for the vehicle, uh, so we had to put legacy batteries. Oh, okay. But those are low speed. The, yeah. They'll do they'll, they'll do fine because they're not they're not high performance vehicles. They don't yeah. probably don't have to have long distance travel, right? Like so, the range doesn't require. A, and then the weight, uh, because you're traveling at low rate of speed, it doesn't do as big of a... And you're probably on streets where are flat. You're probably not going up and down too much, probably, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, so, so yeah it's more like a for golf cart. Yes. That strolls. I had some of the golf carts. People go fast. They want to get to the next hole. <laughs> but this yeah. is kind of a strolling around the city. Uh yeah, that's uh, that's a good. So then, what? How big of the uh, motors are you using? Are you using DC motors or AC motors? No, no, no. We're using AC motors. AC motors. It's a seven seven point five kilowatt uh, motor. Ah, AC. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, a seventy two uh, volt system. Seventy two volt system. There you go. Yeah. So the thing, it, it has a lot of of, of, of power of torque because you have a forty six inch wheel. Yeah. Okay. And you so don't need top speed, so you could have a lot of torque. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you need a lot of torque, and these 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 things are, are big. I mean, uh, I mean, seven and a half kilowatt is not nothing to laugh about. That's that's ten, twelve horsepower. That's almost twelve horsepower. Ten. Ten. ten horsepower. About ten horsepower. Okay. Yeah, so... but, but the carriage has one horsepower. <laughs> but yes, the original. One. <laughs> so you're you're increasing the power output by by sevenfold there. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. Um, you know, um, I, I don't know if you know this, but at least here in the States, we have all this, like I was saying in, in the beginning of this, that we have all these 
uh, discarded batteries, lithium batteries. Uh, and there's a huge industry that is starting to form uh, because of it. So I don't know if it's happening in Mexico, but like there's these companies that dumped a bunch of these scooters into the cities, right? And so for some reason or another, you know, sometimes cities will outlaw them. And so then a huge pile of these will go to the recycler. They're like, okay, we don't need them here. For some reason, it doesn't make sense for the companies to change them or rebrand them or whatever, you know, or some of the companies uh, are getting out of that business. So then they end up selling the division to somebody else. And then all of these scooters that are on the streets are branded the wrong color or whatever, you know. So then they end up going by the thousands, tens of thousands of these uh, scooters end up at the recyclers. And so then people like me are buying those batteries and we're buying the motors and buying that stuff. So right now, for example, I have some batteries here that are 36 volts. And I think they have 100. Uh, I, I was doing the... I was I was doing some forensic work on the BMSs and they have a hundred volt uh, MOSFETs, which means I haven't tested it yet, but I, that's the next test that I'm doing. I think you can use two of them in series for seventy two volts, right? And so those I'm selling them at about a hundred, one hundred and twenty dollars a kilowatt hour, which that's is impressive. The lead battery, lead acid battery prices. For, and these are very, these are really good. These are Panasonic NCR1860 BD cells, right? So these are like basically what's on a Tesla, right? Yeah. Tesla re-engineered that one a little bit more, and now they're coming up with their own cells. But up until the production that just recently stopped, I think that like this week, the Model S X uh, versions, variants of their cars just stopped because they're going to retool. And they're going to probably change the battery to the next generation. But up until like last week, they're using that same 18650 that is pretty much the Panasonic uh, BD or a couple other. I mean, the specs are almost the same, right? They have just slight variations of it. Um, and so that's where we're at. I'm like thinking like, man, that would be great because, again, that the performance metrics and the range and speed and stuff for something like that would be great for these. And it wouldn't cost a lot. Uh, to put one of those. What's what's the size of the battery that you ended up putting in each carriage? Uh, we're using nine eight volt batteries, which are what? Let's do the math here. Um, so they're like the size. What's the size of the batteries? Like a hundred amp hours? Maybe? Oh, the size. Oh, okay. You mean that? Uh, it's like Capacity? a twelve kilowatt, twelve kilowatt hour. Oh, okay, twelve kilowatt. Okay, so yeah, that would be about twenty four of these. Right, um, and it well, would actually be... you, you need less because the lead acid battery is not that efficient. You know? Oh, that's right. You can only use half of it. Yeah, or maybe a little bit more. Maybe like eight, ten, something, some, somewhere there it would be, be great. Wow. Yeah, and these could put out well, but you would still need. Well, you never see that those seven kilowatt um, power output, right? I mean, they, they don't use that much. I think they or yeah, do they? Sometimes because yeah, sometimes oh, because they're uh, heavy. Yeah, the, the the vehicle is for eight people. Okay, so they load it up. So yeah, so it's it's like uh, I think almost like three thousand pounds. Oh, okay, <laughs> wow. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so some so you probably would need uh, seven kilowatts. So let's say seven kilowatt is at seventy three at seventy five or seventy two volts, right? Seventy two volts times. I know, 72 volts times, what would it be, like 7,000 watts? Whoa, no, really? No, it would be divided, right? Divided into 72 volts. Yeah, so you're looking at about 100 amps. Yes. Uh, exactly. yeah. That's what the little power. So 100 amps, these batteries could do 25 amps. So you need four, so you need eight of them, as little as eight of them. And that would be about four kilowatt hours worth of, yeah. And you're looking about, <laughs> you're looking about $400 worth of batteries. <laughs> that would be really Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. If you're doing more, you should probably look into something like that. Because here's the thing. I, I had a large shipment of these that were in Mexico City, these these e-bikes, the city bikes. Oh, yes. 
uh, by Uber, right? And they yeah. they commissioned the whole thing, and they were going to send them. And we were discussing like if we were going to bring them to the states because that's an extra expense. And I thought, no, we should keep these in Mexico. They're over there. Obviously, people could use them over there. But the weird thing is that they disappeared. So there's a little, there's some shady dealings going on down there in the Uber people, right, and the representatives and stuff. And they disappeared. Like I mean, it was like two thousand packs. Uh, so it's quite Whoa. a bit of battery. It was quite a bit of battery, and so those are probably in the marketplace somewhere out there. I don't know. Someone kept them. Someone is using them. Someone is selling them. Probably. Uh, hopefully, they're doing some good with them, because at the very least, what we're trying to do is just keep this stuff from going to the trash or going yeah. to be recycled. I mean, these are battery packs that are still have years, years of life, right? Many, That's many true. cycles in them, and so they should be used for something. They should be repurposed. Uh, and something like this would be great, right? So there's keep an eye on that because yeah. there, yes. there's definitely an industry in Mexico also that that. And not only that, now uh, here what we're doing is we're taking batteries from from Teslas, we're taking batteries from uh, General Motor vehicles, uh, BMW has. There's all kinds of stuff. We're taking batteries from uh, modems, you know, uh, oh. communications, you know, that each one has like little packs and. We're teaching people how to rip them apart, and take the batteries, and and so that I think that's the thing that is going to trickle down to Mexico too, because you guys are basically uh, consuming the same technologies just a little bit later, but it's yeah. it's reaching there, right? And so you guys are going to go through the same thing that's happening here. Like we're having so many multiple streams of these batteries in large quantities that's coming in that are very very useful, um, and we can get them on. You know, less than a hundred dollars a kilowatt hour, most most a lot of the times. So, That's great, and I think that that can uh, work great for these kind of of, of projects because yeah, uh, yeah, these guys can really use uh, because they already some of them they already changed uh, batteries. Oh really? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because lead acid, to, yeah, because they use all day, right? All day, every day. They do about an average of twenty miles per day. Twenty miles per day. Yeah, some days they, they will do the full 30 miles. That is the, the range of, of the vehicle. Uh, they never do more than that. Um, some days they don't have any rides. <laughs> yeah. Depends, uh, Especially this year. Like, <laughs> yeah, in this this season they are they are full. I mean, they they drain the battery all the way down. I was like, they oh, did. No, don't Even... do that. Remember not to do that. Oh, because they parked. It. You're saying you're not using the vehicle. No, no. I mean, like. In, in these these holidays, they have so oh, much work. Really? Oh no way! I would think that this this pandemic would keep people from being outside and trying to ride around and stuff. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, during the pandemic, they got shut down actually. Uh, oh, they okay. Were, they I guess I didn't down. realize we're going through that again here. Like major, yeah. major lockdowns happening here in the states, right? And so, I thought the same thing might have been happening over there. So I thought like they're probably hurting right now, but it, it doesn't seem maybe that's the case. Yeah, they are. They are. They just gave them uh, like uh, chance during these days because some people they just want to go out. <laughs> yes, and, we all want to go out. <laughs> we all want to go though, hang with out all with the our friends. With all the restrictions, some people go out. So, so they yeah. allow them allow them to 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 be out there because well, you're in a vehicle. It's in the open air. It's open. Yeah. You have so your, your mask. It's yeah, sunlight. If the sunlight's there, it's killing all those germs. It's not, yeah. you know. It has no windows. It has no <laughs> windows. There you go. That's not the safest way that you can commute with someone. <laughs> exactly. Safer than your car, definitely. Uh, if you're going to have any strangers, you know, uh, next to you. But, uh, wow, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I never thought about that. But there's definitely, yeah, there's going to be more and more electrification happening in our cities. And, of course, it. It has to go even even to those things. I think. I wonder what yes. they think about the horses, because some of these guys used to own horses, right? Do you think yeah. they still own them, or did they did they get rid of them? Some of them kept the, their horses because uh, they loved them. You know? It's like part of the uh, family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of them were able to keep to keep them. Some of them, some of the horses got retired, like for uh, ranch. Yeah. Because that that was kind of kind of kind of the deal, like the horses. We're not going to be sacrificed, but they were going to send to to some place they, yeah. they, they could enjoy. Uh, most of, of them 
kept their horses because they, they do like horses. But having a horse, it's complicated, you know, because most of these people, they live like five, ten miles from downtown. From the city, so, yeah. Yeah, they have to come down like an hour ride in the morning, then wow. an hour or he more. He has to commute. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they had to commute at night uh, and still uh, take care of the horse. So they would yeah. spend like three, four hours just in that part of the business, you know, going yeah. back and forth and, and taking, her, take, take, taking care, of the, care of the horse. But now with the project, uh, what they did is there are some new buildings downtown in the city, which is uh, uh, called, uh, I can't remember the, 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 the name, but it's, it's like, like a hub for, for, for digital uh, companies. Okay. Uh, like big companies, like yeah, I think even, even Pixar was sitting in a small office there. Right? Because Walhalla is a lot, has a lot of relation with Silicon Valley. Actually, mm. what well, is called the, the the Latin Silicon Valley. Mm. M- many companies from 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 the Silicon Valley have a, a, a factory here or something. Uh, so they have these nice buildings downtown, and they, they have this big uh, uh, parking lot. So the carriages, the the electric carriages, are there. So now they don't have to do all this traveling, and they don't have to take care of horse. Ah, and they don't spend on medicines. They don't spend off the, on the veterinarian. Uh, yeah, they can work whenever they want. They, they, yeah. so, some of them even take turns. Like the, the carriage can be out there like twelve, fifteen hours, and they just ship the, the, the driver. You cannot do that with a horse. Yeah, the horse needs a break. He needs exactly. to go eat. He needs to take a dump. You know, <laughs> some days they don't feel like working. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and, and they could just drop dead. <laughs> they also, they do drop dead. <laughs> I've seen pictures of dead horses in the city streets, you know, because whatever. I mean, they're like us, right? Heart attack, they get a stroke, <laughs> they freak out yes. for no reason some days. Uh, that has happened. <laughs> yes. In the middle of the street. Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, no, definitely. It's a, I think it's a better way to do do that thing, I think. Uh, also, the other thing that I remember from the horse thing was that they fart a lot. <laughs> and so, yeah, they, they do uh, emit uh, emissions. <laughs> Lots yes. of them. Yes, and uh, people in the, in the back are usually the ones that are uh, exposed to those. <laughs> It's probably not very pleasant. And then they crap all over the place, right? And so I think that stays in the streets. Uh, and whatever. It's not, the, it's not the worst thing, but, you know, but it's probably un- kind of unsightly, I guess. <laughs> well, there's this, this, there's this story, and actually it was in one of, uh, in a chapter from this uh, series, uh, Silicon Valley. I don't know if you've seen it. No. But um, people in the 1800s, hundreds, they were worried. Uh, because they knew the growth cities were taking, cities like London, like New York, Paris, and they they they, they knew like what's going to happen in 50 years. You're, we're going to have so many carriages and so many horses that the streets are going to be covered with with manure. You know. Yes. And that was an issue. That was a problem. That was a problem they're facing. Then, yeah, and then the car came, yeah. and the problem disappear and they, everybody well, was like oh yeah so now we don't have the problem they never thought that that it was a worse the problem was probably going. because yeah. it was the emissions yeah. they're invisible they're tr- they're harmful they're killing people they're giving us illnesses uh they're kind of destroying the planet yeah I, it's uh, but it's invisible you don't see it it's like it just floats away right i don't know i probably say it would, it would probably would have been better if it was, the streets were full of manure <laughs> <laughs> We might have been able to find something useful to do with that, you know. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, totally. such a crazy thing because I know I don't know if this happened in Mexico too, but here in the states there was a lot of the cities that eventually, around that time, they transitioned to electric, and they had the, the electric trolleys uh, all over the city. Like in in San Francisco, you could still go there, and they still have those cable systems, yeah. and the the electric trolleys are around. And I know this used to be the thing here in, in Los Angeles too, right? 
But then eventually uh, companies, you know, people were like, I think it was kind of like a coup. They they kind of took over and bought those things and they they bought some politicians to get legislation into place that would change them. And then eventually they, they, they wanted to put, you know, uh, regular gas power or, or not gas power, uh, diesel power, uh, yeah. you know, buses into the streets because then there was no cables, no, no, you know, no manure, no cables, only good stuff, right? <laughs> only fumes, oh, <laughs> only yeah. all the sun from the thing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, the, the, yeah, the, I don't know how that transition, we, we went from okay to better to, to really bad or worse, you know? Um, and then now we have to kind of change that back and then go back to where we were at almost at the early in the, in the turn of the century here, there was electric trolleys and electric buses, you yeah. know, and we have to go back to that now again. <laughs> yeah. And that's the, the best way to do, to, to have transport in the cities. And, and that's yeah. what we were trying to promote here in Mexico. And, and this electric carriage, I thought it was going to uh, be a good project because it would uh, put people in close contact with electric vehicles, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you have uh, plans to expand uh, uh, outside of your t your town and do those. In, yeah, well, like I said, there's places, uh, almost every major metropolitan area has those, right? Yes. Uh, well, we uh, people from, from New York, from Philadelphia, from, from, from many other cities have come to see the carriages. Wow. Okay. Uh, and we've been in talks, but then the pandemic came. And yeah. Kind of put a wrench in the whole thing. Yeah. So hopefully uh, next year is going to be a great year for, for that for you. Oh, yeah. I think you will be able to find uh, how to use, how to introduce lithium into those too. Because then it's going to be a much, much better system too that's going to last forever. Because imagine you put, a, you put two of those packs from a Tesla. Uh, you'll have to figure out how to run on 48 volts, 42 volts, but you'll have 10 kilowatt hours and yep. the, and it's going to be so simple to install them. It's like two blocks, you know, some little battery management system and then you're done. And then you got like, and you got a thousand cycles in there, right? So it was, <laughs> those will be good for the next 25 years or something, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> that would be great. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's going to be possible because now there's more Teslas um, going down to Mexico. So uh, every time the one wrecks, you got to be there just to scoop up the batteries. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Grab yes, some <laughs> seed. And now, by yeah, the way, and now you can get batteries from China that are not super expensive, uber expensive too. So there's a lot of there's a lot of choices. I know. Uh, and uh, the lithium iron phosphate, for example, those take that. Uh, they're super safe, super long lasting, and so, now they're dense too. So you don't have to have a giant battery like they used to before. I mean, not quite like lead acid. It was between like, lead acid and you know lithium cobalt oxide, but now they're 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 nearing cobalt nickel nickel cobalt oxide uh, uh, energy density. So yeah, that's that's you're gonna be able to find some some good, and then maybe even for your buses. How's your What's the uh, the next move on the on the bus side of your business and your ventures? Well, um, it, it was a complicated uh, project because we were way ahead of, of the market, uh, and then the, this thing with the election year came. Then we got distracted with the with the, with the carriages, uh, garage, which was a great project. Uh, then the the new president came in, so so everything is kind in. in in the past because the, uh, companies don't know what's going to happen. They, they, they wait to see how the new leadership is going to uh, take mm. direction, you know. Uh, and then the pandemic came. So <laughs> it's been pretty difficult. The, the, the truth is, just this last September, the first public transport bus went to the city, to, to, to the streets in, in Mexico City. That's how far behind we are, you know. So the first electric, uh, all electric. All electric, the oh, first all electric. Uh, it's a, a uh, it's an eighteen meter bus. This uh, sixteen thousand pounds bus. Uh, it's in Mexico City. It's a Chinese Chinese bus. It's just one. A BYD. To bring... No, it's a U-Tongue. Oh, okay. 
yeah, they're supposed to bring nine more during, I think this month or maybe next. But that's, that's the, yeah, that's just 10 buses. 10 buses. Uh, well, that's a start. In a, in a 25 million people city. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge city. I mean, you need like thousands of them. Um, but this is start. That's a good, a good science to come because that means those are like public transport, right? So that means this, that means yeah. that now it's the government is investing in renewable uh, public transport, which is I think it's good because then maybe next thing you know they're get they're lending or providing grants to other private companies to start developing, you know. Yes. Yeah. So this is accelerating the, the interest, you know, uh, because also people people. They, they, you know they are afraid to everything that is new and different. So, yeah. so with the conversion you have the electric thing and the conversion thing. So actually yeah. you have to convince them that both can work. And even though we have the, the, the prototype and it runs and and, and uh, we have been doing all these demonstrations and we can show the, the video later where uh, it's a small bus uh, pulling this this huge trailer stimulating the the 16,000 pounds wow. we did those those simulations and demonstrations but people are afraid of putting their money and these buses are not cheap you know yeah so i think this this that just happened in mexico city that this big company uh invested in bringing it's an energy company like a utility company mm. that, that is like financing the, the bus to the operators so I think this is just going to accelerate the transition uh, because people are going to see all the benefits because they're not only benefits, <laughs> you know? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so, so this is going to accelerate and, and hopefully we, we can also start uh, this, this uh, bus project uh, with, with many more uh, vehicles on the street. Wow. Well, that's pretty good. We're rooting for you. I, yeah. I want to see more of that happening in Mexico and I got to go check it out. I never been to Mexico City. Uh, I never been to Guadalajara. You know, it, as soon as they they have more over there, then I have a reason to go. <laughs> I mean, not that I don't have reason now, but you know, it's like now I can. Uh, it could be leisure trip, but also a business trip because if I make a video, then you know yeah. that's kind of a thing to to promote. Yeah, I'll show you around, and, and we have some tequilas. There you go, tequila. No, no, uh, no tequila, Tesla tequila. <laughs> that's expensive. <laughs> that's right. There <laughs> is just one. Overpriced, overpriced. <laughs> yes, that's probably no not. Shots. You don't, you don't do shots with tequila. Oh, you don't do shots. No, 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 no. that's the worst way. Oh, well, you sip it, right? Exactly. Yeah. You sip it. You sip it, and it's uh, añejo. You know, I, I used to, yeah. I used to be into tequila a little bit. Um, I did buy some last time I was in. There, I don't know. I went to Mazatlan, maybe. I think. I think that's where I bought some. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed some tequila every once in a while, <laughs> the good kind. Do you remember? Do you remember the taxis in Mazatlan? No. Well, no. I didn't see. I know that there used to be those 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 things, right? The BW things. The, the, yeah. yeah, they're called pulmonias. Pulmonias. Yes, I would love to have seen one real there but we didn't that time you know we went on a cruise oh. and so you're only there for a few hours you know for yeah, the day right. you get and you know, they dump you on that it was an ugly port by the way they dump you in this really trashy place in town and it stinks and then uh yeah you kind of go through the old part of the city and you can see how maybe that part of the city used to be uh great back in the days maybe in the 60s or so <laughs> now it's all run down and stuff <laughs> but uh i yeah definitely i would have loved to seen one of those and and uh, are they still around you think or those are all gone kind of thing? yeah they're still there we're, we're pushing we're we're trying to convert all those oh, yes are. those are super easy to convert yeah and they're iconic and i you know even people like me that i wasn't so much into them now I'm I'm like these things are amazing. They're great. That shape is, you know, cool, and you could take the top off, and you know, I, I think some of them even have the windshield where you can fold it forward. Yeah, uh, yeah. You could take the doors off. It's like a great little vehicle to explore uh, the jungles and you know whatever the city, the beach, or whatever you wherever you want to go. Go to yeah, the so that's another option though for for convenience. Yeah. yeah. I'd say you go for that. I mean, those are so simple to convert. And yeah. now we, 
we have the batteries that last. Yeah, the same thing. About five of those Tesla Model S modules fit on those great, and they give you over 100 miles of range. Um, and you could do it now. Well, yeah, there's still we're we're gonna get there. We're gonna we're gonna be somewhere around the the sub ten thousand uh, dollar conversion, you know, kit. Yes. That you can bolt on. We're we're there almost. I think there are battery options now that we can get, but it's just we need something that is like a lot, right? Like even these scooter batteries that we have right now, there's about ten thousand of them. But then once those are gone, cool. they're gone. Right, yeah. and and then yes. you can't really plan like a huge project with them because you know because you they they have to buy all the batteries right now that you need for the project because if you wait you know in six months they'll be gone like people are yes. buying them they're using we're put, we're doing all kinds of things with them put them in our houses so as a power wall you know DIY power walls we're gonna do probably a bunch of e bikes a bunch of like little vehicles you know. Um, motorcycles you could do all kinds of things with these things um so it's, it's going to be great and i'm sure down the line there's going to be other versions but that's the thing that it's always by batches they come in and so that's the challenge that yes. we we get batches of these and they're good and they're great but then once they're gone they're gone and now then there's a different model and then there's a different version sometimes different configuration sometimes different voltages you know that sort of stuff and um but you know, it's a thing. It's all fun trying to figure out how to stuff, keep it out of trash, and figuring out how yes. to use it and stuff. Those are real fun projects. Yeah, and yeah, I think that that is going to happen in Mexico. So you got to be ready for that. Yeah, you got to figure out how yes. to maximize. I think your designs to use some of those because I think that's that that checks a lot of good marks, right? Like it, it keeps e waste from going to landfills. It maximizes the 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 value of these things because you know these these things. If you send them to a recycler, they recycle them. They're worth the raw material, right? They're worth like you know three dollars a pound of copper or whatever it is. But like these batteries are batteries. They're already made. A lot of energy went into making these, and they're ready to to be used. So yeah, and they they can still last for a long time. Yeah. If you find the right application, they, they have a long, long time. And uh, it's good for the environment to keep them as batteries for the longest until they're completely dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? They should be batteries before you <laughs> melt them <laughs> to get to get the raw materials out of them so you can make more batteries, right? That's a good thing exactly. that needs to happen also, right? But yes. but not not too soon, not before they're they're completely done. <laughs> So that's what we're doing here. And, yeah, I think you're going to be able to benefit that from down there. So keep an eye out for that because I know that yes. that is already starting in Mexico. Uh, there's a large industry that are using lithium batteries that are going to, for one reason or another, we're so wasteful as societies, right? Uh, yes. Just because they have the wrong, you know, literally because they have the wrong uh, label. They have the wrong, you know, branding. They're like, nope, send it to the recycler. Get rid of them. <laughs> Brand new. I'm like right now. I made yeah. a video earlier today. Brand new product, never used, just because they have the wrong color scheme, the wrong uh, logo on it. Sound to recycler. Yeah, just give them a second chance, you know. <laughs> yeah. A second life. Yeah, we need a set. We need to repurpose those. You know, use them differently. And so that's 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 what I do here every day. And uh, I think you guys are gonna see that quite a bit of that in Mexico. So. It's been great talking to you. Do you want to, uh, do you have like social media channels that you want to plug in so that people go and see? I know that you have probably a video of the, your bus and a video of the carriage and stuff. And so what people want to yeah, see. Yeah, well, that. we basically have the, the web page, which is yeah, apbmx.com. And okay. uh, then a uh, Facebook page. And, and, and basically that, that's it. We're not that into, into, into media. We should move more there we have a small youtube channel channel where you can see the the videos okay um and yes i mean uh, price is is the main thing here uh, to make this happen especially here in mexico uh, i can tell you the, uh, the quick story when i talked to Elon Musk about or, or tried to talk to him <laughs> oh okay you you try to pitch about, something about to him. batteries well the thing is uh, when, when we were building the, the, the bus, we were installing the, the lithium batteries. Uh, I heard he was coming to Guadalajara. He was coming to the International 
Aeronautics Congress, something like that. That's right. Yeah, he does to... the rocket stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. He came to talk about SpaceX. But mm -hmm. I thought, okay, this is going to be a great chance to talk to him because he just uh, talked that uh, Tesla was going in, into heavy duty vehicles. So I thought, okay, maybe he'll be interested to see one. You know, mm -hmm. it's here already. So <laughs> I did try to talk to him. Uh, I did. I, I wanted to, to, to ask uh, to have access to cheap batteries because, you know, Tesla is the cheapest manufacturer. Yeah. Um, so I went to the Q&A section of the conference and tried to talk to him in front of everybody, but I just, I just couldn't. But I mean, I tried. You tried? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of uh, it's kind of intimidating because everybody's trying to get its attention probably, right? Um, yeah. And then he doesn't like to talk, deviate too much on the subject. So if he was talking about rockets, he would have been like, no, I'm only answering questions about rockets right now. Kind of thing. That's exactly what they said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've seen that him do that quite a bit because people will try to ask him about rockets you know when he's doing something about tesla and then he's like no i'm only talking about cars today i'm not talking about or yeah. or the the boring company because he's got so many things going on that people just want to talk to him about all kinds of things right and so yeah yeah that's that's cool i mean you never know i i don't know if you yeah i think he's he's got really big fish to fry right <laughs> he's got a lot of cars to make and so he's using all the batteries that he that he's got. I know that yeah. there's other accounts of people trying to pitch stuff to him, and he's like, "No, I gotta, I gotta use all these batteries." You know, it's like for myself. I know, like he, like even Tesla Powerwalls. You know, yeah. he wasn't delivering them because he didn't have enough cells. So yes. he's kind of, yeah, he's the biggest consumer of uh, lithium cells right now. And yeah, now. There are many options now, you know, and, yeah. and, and prices are coming down way fast. So yeah. this is gonna, this is just gonna going to get better every day. Yes, so we're really excited of, of this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can't wait to see what else you do. We'll have you back again when you have uh, another breakthrough on your on your either one side, right? If the carriages thing happens or the city buses happen thing, then let us know. Reach out to us, and then we'll yeah we'll have you back for that. Yeah. That would be great. I will keep watching your videos. I, I've been watching your videos since I started with this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the same thing on this side. I'm just trying to, you know, do the same thing, you know, to explore that and advance as much as I can from wherever angle that I can. And, yeah, just keep moving forward. Great. All right, Matt. So thank you for joining me. We'll see you on the next episode, okay? Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for having me. And let's go. Let's go electric. Let's go electric. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye.